will Montana be the next hotspot for state to state migration? I think it could be. For decades, Montana has been a popular destination for tourists, but not so much for new residents. It's sort of strange they haven't grown as much as a few of the other states in the area like Idaho, which has almost half the land but double the people, Colorado, which has two thirds the land and almost five million more people than Montana. One of the biggest reasons Montana has had slow growth, it's like Wyoming. They were passed up by early settlers because of the harsh weather landscapes. Things have obviously changed, meaning harsh weather and rough terrain can be overcome to a degree these days. But a slow start takes generations to get near a population of over 1 million residents. Unless, you know, like the state they find gold or strike oil there, that'll drive people in really quick. Hunting, fishing, and camping only brings so many people in to stay. In the last few years, Montana's popularity has shot through the roof. The number of people that have moved to Montana has started to increase, and the number of people that say they want to move to Montana has tripled. What exactly is driving this newfound popularity? In this video, we're going to list 10 of the biggest reasons Montana is gaining popularity. Now, before we get going, not every one of these reasons by itself is going to make people move to Montana. It's normally a combination of two or three reasons. As an example, I didn't moved to Oregon for the craft beer scene, but the nature, low population density, and the beer scene sort of did. So today we look at the 10 reasons Montana is getting more popular. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, outdoor activities. Montana offers a wide range of outdoor activities such as hiking, camping, fishing, skiing, whitewater rafting, wildlife watching, and a whole bunch of hunting. This will normally draw in tourists and hardcore outdoor types, but in recent years, this has changed with people looking for a better quality of life, you know, people working remotely, and folks, I don't know, living the van life. There's quite a few of those on YouTube that are living van life in and around Montana. The biggest state for that is Arizona, but Montana has a good amount too. Montana though definitely offers a better quality of life for people that enjoy the outdoors. Millennials and Gen Z statistically are enjoying the outdoors more than Generation X and the baby boomers. I mean, Montana is known as big sky country. This is because it's famous for its expansive skies and stunning sunsets, providing a sense of tranquility, calmness, whatever you want to call it. Open spaces will do that to people. Number nine, low population density. Sort of what I explained in the beginning of this video is they don't have a lot of people living here and they got a lot of land. Give an example, California has 251.3 people for every square mile. Montana has 7.09. New York has 416.42 for every square mile. Obviously California and New York and just about every other state has giant cities and that helps raise that number. Montana really doesn't have any big cities. Their biggest city is Billings, which had a a population of 117,000 residents back in 2020. Their entire metro area only has 187,000. New York City has square miles with more people than that. Number eight, political and social environment. Montana has a reputation for being a politically conservative state, which may attract individuals who align with those ideologies. Yes, and I've mentioned this before, but a lot of people really look at how the state stands politically before they'll move there. As an example, more people leaving California will go to Texas or Arizona if they are Republican or conservative. If they're more liberal or Democrat, they'll head to Oregon. Well, they used to, not as much anymore, but they'll definitely head to Washington. Well, Montana's making more progress with the conservative crowd than Idaho has in recent years. Texas still blows everyone out of the water, so let's erase that from the equation. But their popularity with the conservative crowd is definitely catching up with Idaho's. The state's cultural values, including a strong emphasis on personal freedoms and self-sufficiency, can resonate with certain individuals seeking a particular social environment. Montana's got all that. Number seven, job opportunities. Now, another reason Montana's gaining popularity is different job opportunities that are starting to grow in Montana. While Montana may not have the same level of job opportunities as, let's say, larger states or metropolitan areas, it does offer certain industries and sectors that are thriving. This includes agriculture, tourism, outdoor recreation, energy, healthcare, and technology. Yes, technology is starting to boom in Billings. But I think the big one going forward and why a lot of people are getting more 
more and more into Montana is the tourism, like ecotourism, wildlife photography. This is bringing in a lot of tourists. Well, you need people to work the jobs that are in hospitality and tourism. Just the other day, we did a video about how by 2028, service industries and hospitality and tourism being one of them are going to start to outshine a lot of the older jobs we used to have. So even though a lot of the tourists are coming here just to be tourists, they're not staying. A lot of the people that work those industries will be staying and it's become very important to them and very popular. Number six, better for families. Yes, families are starting to realize Montana's a pretty good option. Back in 2005, there was a study that ranked the states by the best place to raise a family. Montana was ranked 27. In another study, they were ranked 26th. 10 years later, in 2015, they had jumped all the way up to either 19 or 17, depending on which study you looked at. Now, those studies are done every 10 years, so we'll see another one in two years. But I did find other companies that did studies that have Montana sitting around number 13. So they're moving in the right direction. I mean, small town life and country living are definitely going to be better for raising a family. Safer, smaller schools, which can also be a bad thing. Story time. When I was in the army, there were several dudes that <laughs> came into the army with their wife, who was also from their small town and probably their high school girlfriend. And in a lot of those cases, the girls were really good looking and the dudes really weren't. But in their small town, he was like one of the only options. Well, then they get out in the world and realize that he's not much of an option and they bail on him and the poor dude has to move back into the barracks because she's now living at their house with her new boyfriend. And yes, I've seen this play out several times. Number five, quality of life. Quality of life we've kind of touched on, but this is a whole bunch of different attractive stats for Montana all in one. Montana has a low crime rate. It's not the best in the country, but it's pretty good. They don't have a lot of violent crime or crime at all, but since they have so few people, if you look at the crime rate, they're ranked number 15 right below California at 16. But California has millions and millions of people. If you look at the overall amount of violent crimes, just the number, yeah, it is light years ahead of Montana. But still, their crime rate is pretty low. They have clean water, clean air, and a strong sense of community. Any Western state, there's kind of this frontier, work together mentality. And you'll find this throughout most of the Western part of the United States. Maybe not the bigger cities like San Francisco, Seattle, Los Angeles. Even though Portland, Oregon has its problems, the people still have a strong sense of community. I think that's part of the reason we have such a bad homeless problem. They know they can get some help here. And before you do, stop typing. Yes, Portland has such big problems that one nice thing is overwhelmed by the negatives. But yeah, a lot of people feel the quality of life in Montana is better than most states, and that's adding on to their popularity. Number four, affordable housing. Yes, homes are cheaper in Montana. Maybe not compared to Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Missouri, but when you look at the other Western states, Montana's pretty cheap. Now, it's really hard to get an average for an entire state, but Zillow came out with something in March of 2023 on home value, which, you know, that's not the average. It's kind of what most of the homes here are valued at. The gap is what you should be focusing on. Let's say you're in California. The home value index in March of 2023 was 700 $128,000. Oregon, $485,000. Washington, $562,000. Montana, $427,000. They're a little bit higher in Idaho with $435,000. Wyoming is cheaper, almost hundred grand cheaper, $325,000. So out of the 11 Western states, 12 if you count Texas, there's only three states that have cheaper real estate. And that is Wyoming, Arizona, and New Mexico. Number three, entrepreneurial spirit. Montana has a growing startup scene. More and more tech firms have been moving to like the Billings area over the last decade, along with just normal small businesses. Montana is known as a business friendly state. This is helping attract younger professionals and making it more popular. In my opinion, this should be like your target customer or your target audience. Young entrepreneurs, on average, love the great outdoors. Montana has plenty of that, like we've already discussed. They bring people into the state that pay taxes and most of the time work remotely. So not only is a startup bringing in a company that's paying taxes, they also bring in employees that are paying taxes. Some obviously will have employees in other states if they got people working remotely, but they're getting more tax dollars and they're really not having to supply jobs to people. I honestly think 
think the king of this situation is West Virginia, or at least it should be West Virginia. They're putting a lot of effort into bringing in young professional and remote workers as we speak. I think they need to double and triple their efforts. But I think startups and remote workers can be a cash cow for the state of Montana if they do it right. I mean, it's helping them gain popularity now. So once they start seeing the numbers roll in, I'm sure you'll see more of an effort by the state to attract remote workers and startups. Number two, film and television production. This has been part of American life since forever. We see something on TV or movies and we want it. Couple perfect examples of that. Back in the day, I believe it was NBC started showing all kinds of shows like Green Acres, Petticoat Junction, Hee Haw, the Beverly Hillbillies. They had all these small town backwoods type shows. Well, this created a rush on small town America for a few years. People have been flooding to the city for decades and all of a sudden this kind of made it look okay to live in small town and rural areas, and they saw an increase of people leaving cities, moving to rural America. Studies found this was a direct result of what was going on on television back in the day. Couple more examples, Top Gun came out. Everyone wanted to join the Navy when the original Top Gun came out. Recruitment shot through the roof for the Navy, and even when all the different movies and TV shows about Navy SEALs came out, now everyone wanted to be a Navy SEAL. This goes for fashion, food, we see it, we want it. All these cooking shows have been a money tree for culinary schools. You think back in the day, everyone wanted to move to Southern California because they saw shows like Baywatch, Melrose Place, Beverly Hills 90210, even way back to Gidget. That sold the American lifestyle. People wanted it, people moved there. The TV show Dallas in the 80s was another example of this, along with Miami Vice. This put the idea in people's head that these cities, these states were great places to live and they wanted to be part of that lifestyle, even though 90% of it is fake, but it was put in people's brains. Well, now it's Montana's turn. They got that show Yellowstone. Great show, but it's piqued the interest of people watching that show wanting to live in Montana. It's not just Yellowstone. They've had those spinoffs like 1883 and 1923. You may think that sounds strange that people are moving to someplace because of watch a TV show or movie. Happens quite often. When that show Prison Break came out, teachers were complaining some of their students were wanting to go to prison because the TV show glorified prison life or something. I've never seen it, but I remember seeing that on the news. It was pretty funny. Pretty scary at the same time. Television and movies play a big part in Montana's newfound popularity. All right, before we get to number one, if you're looking to move to Montana or any state, there's a link for a website called Home and Money down below. They'll help you get in touch with a local realtor wherever you want to move in the United States. It's a pretty good website. All right, on to number one. And number one, social media exposure. Much like television, social media is blowing up Montana right now. The stunning scenery and unique experience in Montana often goes viral on social media platforms like Twitter, Threads, Facebook, Instagram, and especially YouTube. This generates increased interest and attracting a new generation of travelers for an Instagram-worthy destination. This is another one, like television, it plants the seed in a lot of people's head about Montana. One thing leads to another, they end up moving there, or at least they inspire the interest to move there. If you look at Google Trends, Montana is always one of the top U.S. states searched. Those searches also include Billings, Montana, Bozeman, Montana, Missoula, and also Ashland, Montana. Montana. All very popular. 